Mike check. All right, and we're back. It's your boy DJ Boom. We're back for another special episode of the Fresh Start Podcast. I'm sitting here with co host Deco and special guest I Killed the Beat. I don't know what camera we're looking at. Oh, <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> yeah, no, it, new setup. But, um, man, how you doing? I'm Gucci, man. Gucci, yeah. man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Gucci, man, bro. <laughs> but I'm Gucci, though. Uh, where are you from, man? From Savannah, Georgia. What's Savannah, that? Uh, I say east, but like I was born on all sides. Like, you know what I'm saying? Goddamn. Well, not, well, I've been on all sides. <laughs> born on all sides. Raised on all sides, you know what I'm saying? So I had family members just on all sides of the city, or like I moved on different parts. So I just say I'm from Savannah. I just, in the only parts I ain't been in, like Pula and like, Richmond Hill and surrounding areas, but like as far as just like neighborhoods and shit, why not? Like, you said you ain't been to Pula? No, I ain't, I ain't lived there. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I think I remember a line. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You said all your bitches live in Pula? Yeah. Oh, okay. I want bitches from the hood. They live in Pula. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, but it was just like a, that, that was just like a play on it. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you're really from Savannah, you know, not too many. And that pool ain't the hood, really. So yeah. that's why I'm like, okay. So for the people that don't know, um, what all do you do? I know. See, really, I just say I'm an artist, but at the same time, I'm more like a producer as well. Like, if I hear, if I see some, see something that could be manifested musically, I'm gonna just use myself as a vessel and, mm-hmm. and do that shit. It could be artistic as well too. You know, what I'm saying videos. Yeah. And different shit. So I'm mean, like really a jack of all trades, but I try to like concentrate when I'm doing a trade so that I'm more of a jack. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I ace with the shit too. So yeah. How long you been uh, doing music? Uh, I said like 10 years. 10? Yeah. Okay. Going on 11. What prompted the start? Like, what, what made you actually take music seriously? Shit, I can't even cap. It was when Wayne had dropped the, uh, I caught it three and shit. I just found myself just like feeling so inspired to do that shit. And shit, I got um, just took some beats and then just ripped them shits all the way through, like nonstop. You know what I'm saying? I, I got, um, my, I talked into my cousin and he just was uh, telling me how to got down, um, really like do this shit. So I just took that shit and just ran with it. And, that's where it came from. Do you remember your first song? Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, I remember. Now be honest. It, was it fire or was it trash? <laughs> I say it was fire. Like, I was, I was bringing bars. Like, if it, really people say that they want to hear that old, my old shit. Like, they want to like, man, go back to your old shit. I like your shit when you was like, like your first shit. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? How do you feel about that? Like when people say stuff like that, because I know a lot of people feel, or a lot of artists say that if you, when when fans or people who listen say, "Hey man, go back to your old shit," it's almost like, well, as an artist, you evolve, right? So, how do you feel about that when people say that? I, f- I feel like at the same time flattered that they fuck with that that much, but at the same time it's like, damn man, you know what I'm saying? I gotta grow. You know what I'm saying? If I stay the same, you know what I'm saying? It's just showing. In the jungle, you can't you can't just be, you know what I'm saying? Just not moving. You can't just be stationary. So it's all about moving and growing and adapting. And you know what I'm saying? And trying to. My whole goal, basically, with the music, is just to wake up and want to create whatever I want to create at that day. Like, cause at the end of the day, it's music. You feel me? Like, but just feel happy that I got um did what I just wanted to do. Like, it's for the people at the end of the day too. But like that's my overall goal is to like just be able to create what I want to create and people fuck with that shit out there, off the impact. You know what I'm saying? So I was just about to ask: Is it a conscious decision in the transition transition of your style throughout time, or is it just gradually happened? Uh, I say uh, it gradually happened. I put my force myself. I remember it took me like six months to write songs. That's when it took me like. Uh, I forced myself to be take have it a, the, the beat take me a month, and you know what I'm saying. It went from a month to a week, and it went from a week to a day, and then went from a day to like right down on the spot. Like, okay, just put yourself like I put myself in situations mentally, 
like to be like, all right, somebody trying to pay me fifteen hundred right now. Am I gonna be ready for this? Like right now to make a fire ass song, mm -hmm. and like you know what I'm saying, fifteen minutes, uh, like thirty minutes, whatever the time is, like faster. I just put myself in that mind state. So now I'm sure there's other artists out there that uh, are trying to figure out how to create faster. Oh, my fault, bro. You got. I got to turn my phone. Um, yeah, one more. I ain't gonna mean it. I'm over here. Uh, I'm okay. Thank you. Shit, something that I just learned by somebody just told me it was just like inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like just being inspired. If you got a little writer's block, going somewhere, traveling, seeing some new places. You know what I'm saying? That shit bring out to you, bring it out. I just learned that shit. That's yeah. on period with any work. Mm -hmm. Facts. Any she work. Know something. Oh look, I take monthly Fact. I take monthly vacations. Scared up. No, I, dead serious. And my job, my job understands that because if I don't, especially when, and you can probably relate to this, and um, I think artists need to start considering themselves as people who work in the community because your fan base, everything you do is here. Facts. So you can get very blowed. bogged down. Yeah, blowed all of that. And you global, have to get global. up and go somewhere. I don't care if it's Jacksonville. I don't care. Not Atlanta, but, well, it can be. But I say, like, try to go somewhere else. Like, if it's South Carolina, North Carolina, if it's Florida, if it's Facts. wherever. If you, if you just have to drive. I look up those red-eye flights. Oh, $100 round trip to New York? Bet. Book that for a three-day weekend. And that's it. And that is what I need to reset. Let me just get mm. away. Get away from people. Going out downtown is not a break because, again, same people, same energy. You have to break away to a new type of energy. Facts. Factuals. Factuals. Like, that couldn't be said no better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you were talking about uh, inspiration. Do you try to create on a schedule basis or is it as inspiration comes? Uh, both. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I try to set deadlines for myself, but at the same time, like, if it flow to me, it flow to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I really, I really be by myself when I do that. When the career process happen, but I like, uh, I, I've been seeing as of lately, like the more that I diamonds only shopping diamonds. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta uh, be around fire ass folks. You know what I'm saying? And genuine ass folks. I feel, but at the same time, just being around people that's fire in your same craft, competition. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be around the best and, and go against the best. Shit gonna bring out the best in you. So that's what I've been learning as well. You talk about being around a solid group of people. Um, I remember you performing at Global. You were a part of a band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, are you still a part of that? Or? Uh, yeah, of course. Global Soul All Day. We got a project coming out soon. We ain't really got a date on it. We just really like trying to see what's, make sure everything right for us. Just like, the timing of, you know what I'm saying, the climate of where we in. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like, uh, you know what I'm saying, dropping st dropping music and shit, but like, I'm just trying to say that to like, when it's like, after, like, I don't know, I don't want to say like after it, but like, to when it's like, more, more like, less tension, I guess. So, mm. but yeah, the band shit coming, we still performing, we still like doing our thing. So, that's cool, that's I'm cool. trying to learn guitar. I'm trying mm -hmm. to be out there rock star. Like that. <laughs> how do you feel? Um, like, how would you describe your sound? And then also, how would you describe? Would you say that Savannah has a sound? <sighs> okay, I describe my sound. I describe my sound as being like global. Like, you feel me? I try to make make it as as presidential as possible in the sense of like how how I convey my message to to the people. I don't try to necessarily go to, go over their heads, but I still be witty and try to, you know what I'm saying, make a powerful statement and get my my message across. So uh my, as I, it's just global, like all ears can hear it. I feel like the sonic appeal on it. I, I can't really it's, I feel like it's just a global music. So that's how I call it genre of that. But um uh, uh, Savannah definitely does have a sound, you know what I'm saying? And at the same time, it's just like, it's untapped. Like, most people ain't really tapped into it. Like, there's only one person that really don't tap into it, you know what I'm saying? But, like, folks know what it is in the sense, like, the industry, I feel. Who is the only person who has tapped into it? Oh, Quado. I go say the only person. But, like, I don't know, I'm talking like in the main, major. Now, out of curiosity, do you think that it, that's because, like, 
because we're seeing now more artists are coming out from different regions, and those regions do have a very specific sound. Like we're seeing um, with Megan Thee Stallion, a lot of those other female artists that are being, well, I'll use the word curated, but then people are like, oh no, that's just the that's just the sound in Houston. Or you see like that Detroit sound. Do you think that people like Quando have tapped into like a sound in the South, in the Southeast region? Or do you think that it's like that we even have a specific sound? I feel like, yeah. He he did, of course, you know what I'm saying. But at the same time, he's just talent. He's just his talent as well. Like mm-hmm. it takes it to a whole different level, you know what I'm saying. But it's more other artists who just uh, I want to say that's here and incorporate the whole. That's just a more immersed in the whole Savannah link, like culture. But it's not like how old Savannah music used to be. You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm talking Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but it's, it's, it just got a different, like, new wave vibe to it. I would but say, it's, it's and I would say that it's not totally new wave either. You feel me? You know, I feel like it's still, like, Savannah's old school hip-hop scene was very gritty. I think all of the South had a very grittiness, right? right. Mm-hmm. And the difference between Savannah's artists, and correct me or if you feel differently, like, if we're talking about Atlanta versus Savannah, Savannah still has a very gritty when you're trying to be a Savannah rapper, it's still that very gritty where I feel like Atlanta oftentimes plays more on like the melodic sound. Well, because I feel like Atlanta's trying to make a play towards the. I'm not. Not that Atlanta's trying to make a play towards a more uh, mainstream sound, but they're That's just the mainstream. Being for, they're being forced into the spotlight, so everything's more polished there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, I feel like a yeah. lot of artists that I talk to here are cool with a cult following. Mm-hmm. Which is a different approach to sound than if you're trying to break into some large mainstream global successful like you know you kind of sacrifice your sound for the sake of what's popular now let me ask you this how do you feel about um the argument as far as you know back in the day if you were from new york you had to sound like new york if you're from atlanta you had to sound like atlanta do you think it's still important to sound like where you're from and where you grew up no of course not it's just like more so like how the internet uh just advanced everything Mm -hmm. to make people, you know what I'm saying, be able to do things that they wouldn't naturally be able to have access to. So it's just like, at the end of the day, it's like how Kung Fu is, you know what I'm saying, folks just be match- mastering, mastering they flow, people flows like how they be mastering, you know what I'm saying, skills, you know what I'm saying, you practice and you listen, you know what I'm saying, so it, I can't really, you can't really knock somebody for somebody, for like how they, I, I feel, you know what I'm saying, how they, you know what I'm saying, develop. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As an artist. So, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if they're being themselves and they're being genuine, that's when they get that cult following. That's when they mm-hmm. get, you know what I'm saying? That's when they blow up. So, I feel like that's how I, how I go, really. So, who are, uh, who are some artists that you used to listen to growing up? Shit. Uh, Pop. Uh, everybody, MJG. Uh... Saturday, Bob Marley. Uh, uh, come on, I'm sure. Snoop. Uh, I don't know why my mind going blank. You got a favorite artist? I was going to say, I got a Black Cards Revoke question for you. Okay, if you could bring back one something. artist from the dead, right, between Tupac, Biggie, Bob Marley, Who's another one you and Pimp C? Who would you choose? You can only pick one. Mm. Damn. <laughs> That's a hard one. Ah shit. For the culture. For the culture. I'll I'll let you give me two answers. Give me a photo culture answer and give me a for the kill the beat answer. Like for you, what artist would you need to be? Would have to be a live still. Really? Yeah. I thought that would have been for it. the culture. I could see no. that one for the culture. No, for the times right now, Tupac. For the times we in right now, I feel like Tupac would be like. Mm. That'd be interesting. Me would be like, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I would see it. I wonder how that would change with all the. Let me ask you this question then. I'll, before I ask that, like. With everything that's going on, how do you feel about artists being vocal and having a position or a stance with politics and Black Lives Matter? Do you think that that's something that artists need to be vocalizing about or that that's not really their place or that it doesn't matter? I mean, 
not to say I'm not trying to brush off any anything uh, that's that's going on. You know what I'm saying? But it's just so we. It just has become so routine. I say, mm-hmm. so you know what I'm saying. It's like, like folks like J Cole and Kendrick and all these conscious folks been rapping about this for years. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, they're taking risks for their careers for that shit for years. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying it's not important for them to step up, but they like who who are they to follow? They are just artists. I when when you look at it, it's all in they. You know what I'm saying? You can I, I can't I can't necessarily judge them for that. Mm-hmm. You know I feel I'm like the different artists have different roles. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you absolutely. have your political artists and then you have your exactly. blue face. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, but you have artists like Lil Baby who are who they're become a little bit more vocal, and right. that's not usually his stance. Or now, that's not. Do you something. think this is him? Yeah, doing this? I do oh, actually. So, yeah. I, I, I actually like think it, it is. That's genuine. Yeah, I think that is genuine. That's genuine um, but... Yeah, and I think my question, the my next question, well, part two of that question is, um, do because we always look at these mainstream artists, like, hey, how do you feel? What do you think about this? How do you feel about local artists being responsible or holding some responsibility for, you know, um, speaking out on police brutality and things like that. Do you think that that's a local artist responsibility that oftentimes doesn't get uh, picked up? I feel like same with the with the major artists as well. Like if you feel like that's what you need to do, do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like me personally, like. I've been like already just living in the South, already accustomed to just the way that the ways of of way of life hit. Like you know what I'm saying? It's just like my grandma used to tell me stories about like Emmett Till and shit like that, or like just you know what I'm saying? Experiences. She was born in like 1941, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, it was always like you know what I'm saying? Just already taught how that how you know what I'm saying? It is so. I did. I already been mad to the point where I was. I wanted to loot and protest, but I was the only one probably feeling that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to chill out. You know, I had to got um, like, you know what I'm saying? Play the game of life. You know what I'm saying? And play the system. I say. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? With how this shit set up. You feel me? And now that it's like okay, now like this is like. No, we can't take it no more. I feel, I can't stop nobody from being mad. You know what I'm saying? I feel it. You know what I'm saying? I got every right to be mad, especially when like if they was like locked into the system, the whole not even say the system like the correctional system. You know what I'm saying? System, mm-hmm. but I'm saying just like the system of how the shit set up. Yeah. And that's when they really like eyes are just open and they start being woke and awakened and just get raised. Can't knock them for that. You know what I'm saying? But I just already experienced that, so it's just like. When it's when it's um, actual shit that can be achieved, like actual goals and shit like that, that's when I feel like I, me personally, that's when I be more active and see, you know what I'm saying, and make make try to make situations. I feel like it's not real leadership right at the moment. You need to that's be a, like mm-hmm. real leader, like with real goals and real plans. The best leader I've seen so far is the dude from that used to own BET. You know what I'm saying, but like. Uh, as far as going about things, you know what I'm saying? So, with everything that's going on, do you think, you know, I know some some artists are holding off putting out content and trying to wait up till COVID 19 is over, till the riots are over, and things like that. Are you holding back from putting out content due to all the stuff that's going on? Uh, no, not really. Like, I'm, I'm really just trying to be more selective of what I, I do put out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I guess. You know what I'm saying? I even say I guess, but just, you know what I'm saying? So, but I still, I, I don't know. The COVID and shit just changed shit. Really, the COVID. So, I think, I, I wonder how it went, because like Georgia apparently is, we're the only state. Georgia and Florida is like very weird. Oh, yeah. It's like, you go up north, <laughs> nobody's outside. <laughs> people, oh, really? Yeah, uh, people yeah. ain't going outside. You can't go inside with a mask. And we're like the only place that has bars and clubs Something. open and stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm wondering, especially because now we're seeing the shift in the news talking back to COVID and the numbers going up. Um, 
Like, how does that change shows and performing as an artist? Because a lot of these artists here, you perform out of town. Mm -hmm. So how do you think, do you think that that's going to have a major effect on artists performing? Do you think that there might be more artists coming here to perform because we don't have all these, like, strict regulations? Definitely. Mm -hmm. That was the last part. That last part, it was dead on the money. That's Mm -hmm. probably what's probably going to happen. But, uh... I've been, yeah, I've been hearing folks like uh, performing like in other places too. But I mean, it's a, it, I guess it's just a risk that people are willing to take. You know what I'm saying? That we got, they, they be willing to take it. They be willing to pay the ticket. And you know what I'm saying? Get in the show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The artists show to get the money. So, shit, it's, it's, whoever don't want it, somebody else gonna take it. I feel that's like. facts. It's too many artists. Too mm-hmm. many like. That's so many folks trying to eat. Let's talk about your uh, first performance. You remember that? Yeah, my first performance was at Island Breeze. I was like fifth. No, I was 14 at the time. 14, got down with my mama and my got down with my sister and shit was in that shit. My pops was in that shit too. It was a little ass crowd where like <laughs> I rocked the shit. I was the first one to go on. You know what I'm saying? And shit, yeah. They had the guy down being there with me because I was on age. Did you experience uh, things like stage fright or anything like that? Nah, it was it was cool. Like, I don't know. Music I always locked in. So, like, I, it just, I just was spitting the track. Like, I was spitting that shit inside the, the booth. So, it was just easy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, we're gonna uh, take a quick break, but uh, when we come back, we got some more questions for Kill to be. Stay tuned. Cool. First already.